I was in Kanpur distributing Back to Guarded magazines. This was um, 70, 77. So there was Ram Leela festival going on. So uh, the Bullockart party wanted to make use of this crowd. So myself and Ravidas from England, so we were going around the Ram Leela grounds. And we wanted to take a little rest, so we came under a little building. And I saw the signboard there. It had a Bengali signboard and English. It was Mr. Chatterjee, and he was the marriage registration officer of the town. So I told Ravidas that, well, this is Bengali here, so let's go and try to give him a magazine. So we went up the staircase, was third floor of that building very narrow staircase, and we walk inside this Paka Bengali-looking uh, house, old paintings hanging, and big bookshelf, and, and um, easy chair, and Mr. Chatterjee was sitting there. So I went up to him, greeted him, and I gave him one Back to Guarded magazine. So we looked at the Back to Guarded, then he said, um, that, do you know that when Prabhupada was distributing his back to guarded magazines. He stayed in this place. So he said, oh, really? That's interesting. So he shows us around the house. This is where he used to sit. This is where he used to cook. And then there is a line on the top, cloth line. He said, we reserved this line for him. And he said that we, have, we never used it. Only his clothes will be drying there. Then we came down. We sat down in his study. So then, he brought me this book, um, Bhagavatam, signed by Prabhupada, the old copy, and uh, some uh, translations underlined about the personal form of the Lord. So then he told that, um, that he was a follower of Arya Samaj. And <clears throat> Arya Samaj people, they don't have deities. And uh, they do some jagyas, and they stick to the some Rig Vedic verses and all. So Prabhupada used to crit, uh, to make joke on him. He said that Prabhupada used to say that I know what you Arya Samajis do. When you see a Vishnu temple, you look both sides, and if nobody is looking at you, then you pay obeisances, and then you say, "Oh, I am sorry for offending you." <laughs> and he said. Uh, then he said that when he first brought Prabhupada into his quarters, he was telling him that uh, I have been following Ari Samaj, but within home I was still being old Vedic style. I had been worshipping uh, the five murtis, Shiva, Ganesh, like that. Then he said, but uh, I never get any feeling, neither from the Ari Samaj activities nor from this Vedic life. So Prabhupada spoke to him. He said that that day Prabhupada spoke to him for over one hour on the personal and impersonal features of the Lord. Then later on when Prabhupada came after printing the book, he underlined this translation and gave it to him. Then he said, because you think the Lord is impersonal, this is why you are not getting any experience. And while saying this, this man was totally moved. Then he said that from that time, after... He said, after Sai Maharaj uh, left, uh, he, he didn't come back to Kanpur anymore. Then he said, but then I became a personalist. And then he showed his study. There was a, the Gonita and Radhakrishna deities. Then he said that, what our grandfather used to do, I came back in that line. Then now I'm worshipping Radha and Krishna. Then he said, uh, Prabhupada used to take my daughter on his lap and feed her the tomato rice cooked by him. Then he said that, luckily she is here with her children for holidays. And then she, he called her and this lady came and uh, she said that, Prabhupada said that, you should just take prasad. Don't worry about anything else that your father says. Because he, she used to get priests that God has no form and don't worship the deity and things like that. 
So she remembered that, just take prasad, you will become OK. Then she said, I was a personalist all the time. <laughs> then when I was in Bangalore, this is early 80s, uh, you had to make at least you have to make two life members in the month because you're maintained by the temple. So they expected you to bring in some collection. And I was a very bad life membership maker. So, <laughs> but I had to do two in a month. And that month was already after 20th. And there's only 10 days left. So. I was taking the telephone directory and I was just looking some Bengali names again, so it will be much easier for me to do. Then I found this one Ganguly name. So I thought, well, let's make some appointment with him. I called up that place. It said some small, some factory name. So I thought it must be some chemical factory and it will be easy to go and see him. I called up and then I said, I'm speaking from the uh, International Society for Krishna Consciousness. I want to come and see you today. So Mr. Ganguly sounded very positive. He said, oh, you are from Hare Krishna movement. Yeah, you please come at 11 o'clock and see me. So I took the membership form and one small set of books and one poster and like that. And then I went to see this place on Tumkur Road. But I found that uh, this was a huge place. This was like almost equal to the aeronautical engineering place in Bangalore. I didn't expect. And as I s started seeing the compound wall as the auto rickshaw was driving in, I was losing hope that there is no way this man is going to become a member by, by me. Seems to be a huge place. And then I went one secretary, then another secretary, then another secretary. and. And it was already my appointment time, and I'm still with secretaries. And he seemed to be the topmost man of the place. So I, I'm almost losing all the faith. Maybe when I go there, he will say, we already have 10 life memberships in Calcutta, so maybe he will give me you know, a galta, ask me to go back. So still, I thought, well, having come all the way, I should see him. So they brought me finally into this big air-conditioned cabin. And and there was a meeting going on, and then he had to, he actually closed the meeting. He told everybody, I have to talk to the Hare Krishna now, so you all go. And then they all left. So I came in, I spread the book on his table, put the poster up, and then I, 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 I can see that I won't have much time with this man, so I wanted to be really short. So I said, I'm sure you know about this movement, and uh, we are having a branch here, and we don't have a land yet, and uh, maybe we will get one we have applied. And here is a set of books. And this is a great work. You are a Bengali. You should be proud of this, because our Guru Maharaj is also a Bengali. And he has spread Hare Krishna all around the world. And uh, I'm sure you appreciate this service. So if you could take one life membership. And then I became silent. So he opened his drawer and took his checkbook. So then he said, what is the amount? So I said, 2,222. And he said, it's OK. Uh, so I give you a donation. You can make one life membership also. And he wrote some 10,000 something and tore the check and gave it to me. So I was very moved. I said, oh, thank you very much. You know, this is a very nice gesture of you. So then he said, sit down. I want to tell you, I didn't do this uh, convinced by your preaching. So I said, oh, well, I, I didn't think I convinced you either. But I'm, I, anyway, you, this is very nice contribution. So he said, but listen, sit down. I want to tell you something. He said, my father, Ganguly, he was a classmate of your founder, Acharya. Then he said that every day he came to our house and he played chess with my father before going to the college, to the school. school. Matilal preschool. So he said, Prabhupada will come with, uh, in, the, in the bike with his little tiffin for the lunch. And they will play chess, Mr. Ganguly and Abai. And if Ganguly gets defeated, then he will 
uh, have to feed Prabhupada with his lunch. If Prabhupada is defeated, then it's the other way. So he will take. And almost every day, Prabhupada defeated him. And then Ganguly was taking his lunch. This also means that he gave his lunch to him. <laughs> so it's like you conquer the other person's lunch. That's the stake for the chess play. So he said that um, this was the childhood times of my father. He said then he became a Sanskrit scholar, his father, and he was teaching in the local university, Ravindra Bharati, there. And he used to always speak about, you know, that this founder of Hare Krishna movement, that uh, Maharaj was my classmate, and he was coming every day, and he will tell about it, childhood Leela with him. And how uh, Abhay always told him that uh, la he, later on, when he does something, he would take his help. That you should help me when later on, when I do something. And then he always said, what is that something? He said, later on, I'll be doing something. Then I need your help. <laughs> but there was no more explanation this. What was this something that he was going to do? So then uh, he grows up, he becomes a Sanskrit PhD, becomes a professor, he gets married, and he has children. And then he comes to know that uh, the same Abhay Babu has become a Bhaktivedanta Swami, and he went to New York, and so on and so forth. And it's a local center in Albert Road, so he has gone there a few times. And then they were saying that Prabhupada was coming to visit. So. At this time, the, the junior Ganguly, he is now in high school, so he comes with his mother to see Prabhupada. Continuously, two, three days he has come, and there is Guru Puja, and there is class, and, and then in the class, Prabhupada looks around and then looks at him, because he looks just like his father. So he says, Abnar naam ki, kuta ite ke asichin. So then he says, I am Ganguly, I am son of such a Ganguly. He says, oh. Where is he? He didn't come. You tell him, I want to see him. So the mother and son, they come back, and then uh, the son told the father that, that Maharaj wants to see you. So his father says, how can I go and see him? He is the guru of the world, and here I am. I am, I am a guru, and this, that. And so the son says, but he wants to see you. Tomorrow he's going to ask us, why didn't you bring your father? And he said, well, you tell him that I am sick. So he didn't want to go because he's feeling shy. He's feeling too small and shy. He is you know, world guru. He's got all foreigners sitting at his feet. And so then they come back. And then before starting the class, Prabhupada looks at him. And he said, your father didn't come? Then he says, well, he is feeling sick. Oh, he's sick. OK, I will come and see him. So then they, after the class, they went back home and they told him that he said he will come. He said, how he will come to our house, you know, like that. Next day morning, Prabhupada goes for morning walk. And instead of going to Victoria from Park Street, suddenly he turns his route. He turns right, he takes one gully and another gully and another gully. And all the devotees are following him. They think, where is he going? Where Prabhupada is seriously chanting and walking and after going few gullies, he comes to this man's house, he rings the bell. So the son comes down, he is getting ready to go to school and he comes down with the uniform and he sees, you know, Prabhupada with all his disciples in front of his house. Already the whole road is gathering because of this thing and it's a huge crowd in front of his house. And Prabhupada just walks up and a couple of devotees went in. It's a small staircase, so he goes to the house, and then he knows the whole house, so he goes straight to the bedroom, and there is this man laying down. He's not sick, he's, he's just laying down. He's old. he's old. I mean, he's one year older than Prabhupada, so he's quite old. And, you know, family life and conditioned soul, so he's more tired and broken up and like that. So Prabhupada goes and sits next to him, and then he said, and and pokes him on his side with his hand like this, you know, like friends do. He said, hey, you didn't come to see me in Bengali. And then he, he lifts his eyes and he sees, suddenly he's completely shocked that all the Hare Krishna devotees are in his house. 
then he tells his wife, you know, please bring something for him. And, and then they go on talking and Prabhupada says that, see, my disciples, they have to learn Sanskrit. So I want you to, I told you, you know, you should help me. <laughs> so you should come and teach them Sanskrit. It will be very good. And he said, you can travel around the world with me and you teach them Sanskrit. So why don't you do that? So he says, oh, uh, I, Swamiji, I am retired and I am very old and I don't, have, I don't have any spiritual energy. No, you have the spark. It is the same spark like in me. It's the same spiritual spark in you. So you should, now he speaks in English so that everybody else understands. Then he says, no, you should join this movement. This is very important. And then he says, Bharata Bhumite Manusha Janma Hoyla Jar. So you should perfect your life. And better late than never. And then he takes little rasgulla and drinks water. And then, you know, like old days, he takes this man's chadar and wipes his hand in it. And then he pats him on his back. Then he said, you should come. You know, I will take you. You should come. And then Prabhupada gets up and then, uh, you know, he, he tells his followers that I used to sit here and, you know, we come in the morning from here, we, we took that road to go to the school. And he said, he was a very intelligent student. He used to score more than me and all that. And then they come down. And, uh, and Prabhupada continues to go to Victoria Memorial and then he came back. And that afternoon, around 3 o'clock, Junior Ganguly said that around 3 o'clock, uh, when he came back from the school, the father asked for some water. <coughs> then he just leaned back and then he said that uh, <coughs> Bhaktivedanta Swami will take me. And he closed his eyes. That was it. It's amazing. That day was his departure. Or maybe uh, by seeing Prabhupada, he got so excited. <laughs> You know, when you become so happy also, your heart stops. <laughs> so, and he was not very, any specially sick or anything. He was, he was just old age. He was healthy. There was no sickness. And he saw Prabhupada and, you know, that, that interaction with Prabhupada moved, accelerated him so much that uh, that was it. He, he left his body. So, Miss Junior Gangli told, that I was there when he left the body and I could see <coughs> that actually he has, he has been taken by Prabhupada. As he said, you come, I will take you. And when he said that in the morning, we were thinking, he's telling you come to Iskan and I will take you to America or something. But we didn't understand that this is what he meant. He actually took him. So then he said, that's why when you called up, I said, you come. Then he said, in fact, actually, our head office is in Calcutta, and we, we are already life members. He said, I just wanted to share this with you. That's why I called you. And after that, he came next Sunday, even though he was a very busy man, he came for the Sunday program. I remember he was coming from there. Every Sunday, he was coming to the program. And um, so this um, in something that Prabhupada told him before uh, that I will do something and I want your help. And Prabhupada actually offered him, yes, you should come and do the Sanskrit teaching. And because he was not ready to do that, he was mentally like so tired. So Prabhupada took him to the spiritual world. So I, have, I had a copy of uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, where there is a picture of Prabhupada holding a champak flower like this with a lot of sandalwood paste in the flower garland, and he's holding the flower and he's looking like this. So that was the only book I had where I could show him, uh, you know, some work of his Khan. You know, the other Bhagavatam volumes have been sold and we have to get back to Bangalore. So I brought that book with me and I went to meet him because he's the chief of the 3000. I went and showed him some things about Iskan and then showed him this picture that this is our Guru Maharaj. He has translated these books. So he looked at that picture for a while and he brought some things from his little box, some thread and, you know, some things like that. And he was measuring Prabhupada's forehead <laughs> and his ears and things like that. It took about 10, 15 minutes and then he shook his head and he said, 
that uh, all the four Vaishnava Acharyas said in one person. So then he looked at me and he said, you know that we are Shaivites and uh, because we are not impersonalist, so we have nothing opposite to Vaishnava Sampradaya. Uh, but we are worshippers of Shiva. So we do bhakti to Shiva in person. And he said, uh, these Vaishnava Sampradayas, all the four Acharyas, if they come in one body, that is how this person's features are. And he said, I'm an expert in Samudriga Lakshana Shastra. I can see from you. I wish you have showed me a full picture. So then I, I had a picture that I was worshipping. So I took that picture out and I showed him. And he again went on. <laughs> and he had his lens. <laughs> and he did another study. Then he said that I was not wrong. He said, they are all working through this person. Then he said, you are very fortunate to be with him. Then he said that uh, I, some movement like that, this is what I would like to be in my next life. So then I said, but I thought your ultimate is go to, to go to Kailash. Then he said, yes, if I go there and Kailash exists for a long time, so I can always tell Lord Shiva that I want to join some movement like this and I want to spread dharma everywhere. Then. Uh, he was very happy and he said that, uh, you please give this book to me. I want to keep this because, because this has given me the highest experience of studying a person's feature. So I want to keep this book with me. So I gave it to him as a complimentary copy. Another time I remember the same thing happened with a, a dance expert in Madras. And that time we had this Fairchild movie thing. And it showed Prabhupada speaking. So we used to turn that thing around and throw it on the wall. <laughs> and there's a lot of dance students there, and his name is Dhananjay. He's a very good dancer himself, his wife. So he looked at him and then he said, can you replay this for me? So I was replaying, and again he wanted it to be replayed. And then he was explaining Prabhupada's class in terms of Bharatanatyam to his students. <laughs> And it was a very intent class. Prabhupada was speaking about how the power of devotion and the chanting of the holy name, if somebody is chanting the name, he has already performed all the sacrifices and tapas, everything in his previous life. And Prabhupada was very intent speaking in that. His face was changing, his moods were changing like every two minutes. And he was sometimes like very jubilant, sometimes like like frustrated that people are not taking to it and, and he, it was like a, it was like a dance program <laughs> except that he was not moving his limbs and uh, he was making mudras while he was speaking and like this so he would he would stop and then he would say see you know and then he was quoting from uh, the nitya sastra of bharat and saying that these are the different ecstasies that we are learning in theory and you see, and he said that in 28 minutes, he said, this gentleman went through all that. <laughs> and then we played it again, and he went again explaining that. I took notes of that. And later when, when I compared with Nectar of Devotion, it was like, you know, three, four uh, subheadings of the Nectar of Devotion, all uh, experienced by Prabhupada in explaining philosophy of just chanting the holy name. It was not Rasa Leela or it was not intimate pastime or it was, it was nothing of that sort. It was simply about how one should take to the chanting of the holy name and what happens when one takes the chanting of the holy name. And it looked like, uh, you know, preliminary preaching, but uh, in explaining that, Prabhupada's body went through the whole ecstasy of that. So he was saying that, then when he finished that, I said, there is a famous verse in the Brahma Samhita that every word is a song. And then every movement is a dance. And this man took it so serious that in his concerts, he has that verse sung in the, in the first. When he starts the invocation, he has that kathaganam gamanam natyam verse first. And then with that, he starts the invocation. <coughs> so it's, this is how, like these are play, uh, areas where people are inspired, you know, some, from an Arya Samaji to a Gaudiya Mat Maharaj. And we know how he has inspired the movement, but this is how he has inspired others.
in Allahabad, uh, when Prabhupada was there in the Kumbh Mela, uh, one Ramanandi, a Brahmin, came to see him. During the traveling of Bullakad, we have stayed in his house, so we invited him to come to Allahabad. He wanted to know when Prabhupada would be in India, and he was there in Allahabad, so he has come to see. It was an Ekadasi day, and the Kumbh Snan is going to be happening in next day. And that day is the first Snan, first bathing, and then second bathing is going to happen. So Prabhupada is sitting, um, stretching his legs under his desk like this, and his feet are like that, and he is sitting back like that. So. It's Ekadasi. So Prabhupada is talking about Ekadasi. And then Prabhupada says, um, so the Ekadasi, the lotus feet fried in ghee. You see, that is very good for Ekadasi. And he was closing his eyes and shaking his head like, lotus seed fried in ghee. It was the best thing for Ekadasi. So somebody immediately went to arrange that, <laughs> just by hearing <laughs> running out to the market. You know, Kumbha Mela is like filled with lakhs of people. Two minutes later, this man arrived, this Ramanandi, this Ramanandi Tilak, which is young son, maybe nine years old. He comes and pays obeisances and he sits there and he has a cloth tied up on his shoulder. And then he puts on Prabhupada's desk and he opens it. And Prabhupada looks at it and he puts his hand like this, a whole hand like that, and then <laughs> eating that. And then, then he said, just see, there was lotus seed fried in ghee. He just said it two minutes before. And he said, just see, it has come. <laughs> and then he looks at the Ramanandi and he said, how are you? Prabhupada used to stay in a house of a Bengali in Tarasbad, one town there in UP. It's called Gaurnitai Bhavan. It's a Bengali. They have Gaurnitai deities at home, and this man happened to be their family priest. Even though he's a Ramanandi, he did the Gaurnitai worship for them. And he lives in a village. He has his young son. So Prabhupada takes little and then gives out like that. Then he said, so you haven't taken bath in the confluence? In Hindi, he's saying, in Sangam, you haven't taken bath? He said, Swamiji, I have come to take bath in Sangam. Then the next thing he does, he's got a plate, <laughs> got a pot, <laughs> and he puts the plate under Prabhupada's feet, just like this. And I was just behind Prabhupada's seat, so I could see that when he put the plate, Prabhupada just adjusted his feet on the plate, like putting his feet on his plate. And the next thing is, he has got the Sangam water in his pot, <laughs> and then he bathes Prabhupada's feet, <laughs> like this. And then he's chanting his mantras and, you know, he's bathing Prabhupada's feet and Prabhupada's looking at him, big smile on his face. And, you know, during that time, uh, it was very rare to get Prabhupada's Charanamrit. You know, this is, you're talking of 77, you know. So it's like uh, everybody is, it's 76 December. So everybody is just looking at it and then so he takes the water and puts on his head and then drinks and then he sprinkles on everybody. Then, then he says, he says, um, your feet is the actual Sangam. Then he says, what will, what will we get in bathing that Sangam? Then he shakes his head and he says, actually, <coughs> because your feet will make this Ganges purified. And I know you are not going there. You won't go there. So I brought the Ganga here. <laughs> so then he said, part of it I will mix in the Ganga. <laughs> and then Prabhupada is smiling like that. Then he said, give me your son. He says, I will make him Acharya. So then the man says, he is yours, Swamiji. You can take him any time. And Prabhupada says, no, no, any time means no time. You give him now, I will make him Acharya. So then he says, Swamiji, he is just learning grammar now in Sanskrit. So to study the Bhashyas, the commentaries, he must know some grammar. Once his Vyakaran is over, then I will hand him over to you. He is yours. 
and Prabhupada is insisting. He says, no, no, what grammar? We don't need grammar. You give him to me, I will make him Acharya. Now this was the fourth time Prabhupada was saying it. Then this man said, Swamiji, I am not saying no. It, my, everything mine is yours. He said, but he is too small. He will be only a trouble for you. So just few more years, I will hand him over to you. And Prabhupada said, okay. Take it, take it. Uh, then, he, then he extended his hand like this and rubbed this boy's head like that. And then there were other visitors. The All India Radio was coming. So, you know, this man left. And then so many years passed by and I'm taking Gurukul boys to Allahabad, Ardha Kumbha Mela, uh, for them to see the different groups and akhadas and learn something, laboratory work. So I have about 10 Gurukul boys with me and I have heard during that time that the Ramananda Sampradaya, after so many years, they were broken into a lot of sects. And especially the sadhu sect of their group was not interacting with the other groups. But that year I, I heard that they have elected one leader for their sampradaya, for the whole sampradaya, which was like, you know, difficult to believe. They will never come together. They were all fighting. And now they have selected one man as the supremo of all their sect. So there was a huge Ramananda stall there in the camp. So I told the boys that you should see this because God knows tomorrow one of you may be becoming a guru. So you should see this, how this is being done. He has united this whole sampradaya. It is very uh, unheard of. And I heard that he's a very young sannyasi. So we will go and have his darshan. So we went to see him. And because I had South Americans and you know Australians, so we were given a little priority. So we go forward. and. He was sitting with the heads of the different akhadas there. There was about 100 people there. They were all men with long beards and matted locks of hair. And they were all like three times elder than him. And this very young man sitting there on the big seat. And, you know, a few people doing chamara for him. And so we went in and we paid obeisances. And one devotee, one Gurukul boy, Prem Vikas from South America, loudly chanted the sannyas sukta, which is the tradition to greet sannyasis. And as he started chanting, everybody just became silent. And this Maharaj, young Maharaj was sitting there and then he heard it. And then after he finished chanting, uh, I heard him saying, there's no microphone or anything and everybody is silent. And he, I just heard him saying, and I, I heard it was a poetry. He's composing a poetry straight there in Sanskrit. And that was about Prabhupada. So he is, he is saying, uh, the Acharya of the Hare Krishna movement, he starts like that. Then he says that if I say like, this is the uh, sloka he has com composed, he said that if I say that um, neither in the past nor in the future, if I say this word that neither in the past nor in the future, there will be an Acharya equal to him. I won't be committing an offense to the founder of my line, who is Ramananda. Then he says, because Ramananda has predicted that Vishnu worship will spread around the world and it will be, it will be done in a very easy way. And, um, and the whole world will take to it. And then he said that he has done in his commentary a prediction about this. Then he said, this is, and as he was talking, I just realized this was that same small boy who oh, Prabhupada just rubbed his head like this. <laughs> and then he was telling him, I mean, the same, same person. I, I can hear his voice and then I saw him moving and said, but this is the same person. So then he finished that. That is where this slogan came from, Nacha Bhuto Na Bhavishyati. We print in our Centennial magazine. That was his composition. Nacha Bhuto Na Bhavishyati. Neither in the past nor in the future. So then he finished the sloka, four slokas on Prabhupada glorification. It ended with uh, glorification of Jagannath. And then he called each boy separately and gave them pavitrams and all the honors that he gives to the gurus in his line. He gave them each one. Uh, you take this, you take this, like that. And then I went up. Uh, then uh, he said, he looked at me and he said, 
uh, Atmatattva Prabhu, you remember me? <laughs> and then he said, you used to carry me on your back. <laughs> so when we were staying in his house, that was the, you know, that was the thing. He, he was calling Lokanath Maharaj old man because he had this white hair. <laughs> so I was carrying him on my back. I was a brahmachari, you know, I was carrying this boy on my back. So he remembered that. Then he said that um, Prabhupada, um, he said, Prabhupada spoke about becoming Acharya. <clears throat> then he said, my father passed away. He never brought me to the Hare Krishna movement. But he told me that I have to study the Shankarabhashya because that is what I have to defeat. So to study that, he sent, that was his last wish. So I had to fulfill that. So I went to Banaras. I stayed with the Mayavadis and I studied the commentary of Shankara for four years. And he said it was so painful for me. And then I came to study my Acharya's commentary. And then I saw that the whole Sampradaya is broken like this. So I thought that I have the blessings of Prabhupada. So maybe I could unite them. <coughs> so he said, I tried for nine years and this year it happened. That we are all connected together now. So when he said, this is all the blessings of your Guru Maharaj. I told everybody. He said, Ramananda, he wrote a commentary. He said, that's right. Then he said that, but what Ramananda predicted, he said, as long as you are all broken like this, he said, we will never be able to do. Then he said, we don't have to do because it's already been done. These people have done, we just have to join them, and then we go and preach with them. And he was preaching to them, using us as the catalyst there. He said, look at this movement we are spreading around the world. And that was Jai Anilo, Prachu.